Hey there YouTube, this is Showcase Watches. A long time no see, not done a video in a very long time. Um, just wanted to do a quick vid, sort of come out of the woodwork surrounding the whole uh, Rolex authorised pre-owned watches and my opinion on it. Seeing as everyone else is sort of giving their opinion on the watch situation and what Rolex are doing, so I thought I'd give my two pennies worth. Um, so obviously what we're talking about is the Rolex pre-owned watches. These are the authorised pre-owned watches by Rolex. What that basically means is it's a watch that Rolex has got in. Um, they've purchased it, either from the grey market or from private individuals. I think the bulk of these watches will be um, trade-ins. I think when somebody goes into their authorised dealer and buys whatever, a Tudor, a Rolex, an Amiga, whatever it may be, um, they will be able to trade their watches in. So maybe a Rolex Datejust or Submariner or a Daytona or whatever it may be, they can trade that watch in and basically get a market value on that watch. Rolex will then send it away. They'll have it serviced. There's rumours that the authorised dealers will be doing that in-house. So they may have in-house um, authorised watchmakers who can do this work they then return the watch to the authorized dealer with a new box uh, new papers two-year warranty um, this is the um, cream box cream papers cream swing tag a little stitched cream pouch so it's, it's well you know it's, it's nicely packaged it's a nicely packaged deal uh, from Rolex so I understand the allure of it I understand why people would want it um, Who's this for? Well, it's not for us. It's not for the watch hobbyist. It's not for the um, it's not for the educated, the watch educated people. It's for the other ninety eight percent of the world. Um, you've got to remember, our hobby is very niche. There isn't. If you were to take a hundred people out of that hundred people, one or two of them might be watch people. The other ninety eight or whatever won't be um so it's not necessarily you know for everybody it's not going to be for um you know a rolex expert or a you know youtuber or you guys watching this or whatever it, it's not going to be for you it's going to be for joe Blo joe blogs off the street who just wants a rolex and they can't get a rolex because there's wait lists a mile long um, they can't get one because they haven't got spend history with the authorised dealer, whatever, whatever the re reason may be. These watches will be in the display case for sale. And to my understanding, um, they're going to be for anybody. There's no wait list. There's no preferred customer list. It's going to be whoever's got the money can have the watch. So from that perspective, I think it's a brilliant idea and it's a great move. Um, the downside of this is expensive. Whatever the grey market is, it's looking like these watches could be 10 to 20% above the grey market. So it's making the grey market look cheap. Certainly the private sector, the private sales, is extremely cheap um, in comparison to this. So what Rolex have done now is they have legitimised the grey market. They've made the grey market more of an off-white rather than a, a grey. It's more of an off-white. So... It's a, it's a great thing. For, for You know, my opinion of it, I think it's a great thing. I think it's a great thing that people can get the watch that they want. It just means they're going to have to part with money. But let's face it, people who are going to be looking at these watches to buy, they can afford it. If somebody has £20,000 in their bank account to buy a watch, they can afford it. So, you know, don't worry about it. As I've always said, guys, never feel sorry for a person wearing a Rolex. If they can afford a Rolex, financially, they don't have many problems. So, you know... The money side of it doesn't worry me doesn't worry me too much. The fact that people can now get the watch that they want, I think is fantastic. The clever thing that Rolex have done here, Rolex have never had control over the secondary market. And that's because it was with private um, owners of grey market dealers. It was with people on eBay, people on Chrono 24. The supply and demand dictated the... Um, supply of watches out there and the demand for the watches but it didn't control the pricing so Rolex have controlled the supply and demand their brand is valued at, you know colossal for the supply and demand but 
they haven't controlled the prices of the watches. And this is where Rolex have now come in. They now have given us a accredited authorized service to give you a ceiling height of what the watches are worth. So if I, I've heard, I think on Paul Thorpe's, possibly Adrian's um, YouTube channel that uh, there was a, a Daytona Panda, 60 odd thousand euros, um, ridiculous. You know, a Panda today is probably trading at anywhere from 25 to 30. This one is over double that. So Rolex have now put in place a ceiling for these watches. They've given you a top end price. So it now means that the gray market has that maneuvering, that they have that ability to come in underneath that. I've heard, I've heard a lot of secondhand watch dealers, whether it be in pawn shops or whether it be gray market or wherever, use a sort of watch finder as an example. They've said, oh, look at watch finders prices, see what they're charging it for. Because, you know, I remember seeing a Submariner years ago for about six, seven grand. Um, it was six, seven thousand pounds with that grey dealer. The grey dealer said to me, oh, it's a good price. Go look at watch finder. Watch finder had the same watch up for nine or ten grand because watch finder are a bit more expensive. But watch finder will price match. They will negotiate with you. So it's not their end price, but it's their advertised price. And... Um, what this has done now is it's given the, the it's given the grey market the ability to say, go over to whoever, whichever Rolex AD is doing it, go over to their website, check out what they're charging for a Daytona Panda, albeit sixty thousand. My Daytona Panda at forty thousand is cheap, so Rolex have put this ceiling, this cap on the prices. They've sort of put this in there, which have they done it because the market's softening a little bit? It, I mean, we've just come off a ridiculous spike. The market is not collapsing. People are making these predictions that the, the Rolex bubble has finished and the market's collapsing and all this. That's just not true. Um, we've had a ridiculous spike um, over a period of, what, three to six months? A ridiculous spike. It just went crazy. Everything just shot up. Um, and then it's coming, it's coming back down. But if you look at where prices were a year ago to where they are today watches are still worth more today than they were a year ago so it's not collapsing it's softening we're coming off of a, a, a hype spike that's all that's all that's happened um but what rolex have done is by doing this this very clever maneuver they have now um sort of put armbands on the market they've sort of given the market a bit of buoyancy where they can now rest a little bit easy because nobody knew where this softening was going to go to was it going to go back to 2020 prices or was it just going to soften a little bit we didn't we didn't really nobody knew any youtuber who says they know it's full of bullshit they don't know i don't know you don't know um what rolex have done is they've just given a bit of buoyancy to the, to the market they've just given the market some armbands a, a life preserver just to keep it um afloat and they've, they've injected that little bit of just when people thought their collections were going to be worthless and rolexes were going to be you know worth half the price that they were rolex have just thrown this in and they've just pumped that little bit of um a, a bit of an injection that the market needed just to sort of lift it up a bit so i my prediction and this is just a prediction it's not a financial prediction or anything like that. i'm not i'm not saying go out there and spend your money I think this has this coming has now stopped the decrease in the market or the softening of the market. I think the market will now stabilise and I think we will see business as usual where Rolex prices and other watch brands for that matter will just go up a little bit each year. Um, you know, it might be 5% a year, it might be 10% a year, whatever. Certain models vary, but on the whole, I think you can just be back to business as usual. Pr prices will continue to go upwards in the coming years. Um, of course, there's going to be a bit of a softening of the market. We've just got over a COVID, you know, COVID-19. We've had um, financial disasters with heating energy and that type of thing. So, um, of course, markets are going to suffer a little bit. We, you know, we're predicted for a recession. Um, people are just tightening things up a little bit. And it's the build-up to Christmas. Money, you know, doesn't grow on trees, guys. And um, I think... I think all we've seen is a bit of a market correction, that's all. And I think what Rolex have done here is they've just thrown a lifeline to secure the prices and just to give the, the, the market that bit of buoyancy, that bit of um, an injection that it might have needed. And um, I mean, ultimately, guys, the ADs are going to make money. Rolex are going to make money. 
people are going to get watches on the wrist which they want they don't have to queue up in a wait list the crucial thing as austin daniels touched on is you are 100% certain your watch is not stolen. You're 100% certain your watch is genuine. You're 100% certain that professionals have had their hands on the watch and they've been in the back of it and it's all been pressure tested and all the rest of it. You have that certification. You have that knowledge. Um, from that perspective, I think it's a fantastic thing, but it comes at a price tag and that is the biggest issue. But like I said earlier on in the vid, people have the money. Don't worry about people with money, guys. If they're looking to spend... 10, 20, 30, 40,000 on a Rolex watch. Uh, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about them. They're fine. Um, if they were worrying about how much a, a, a can of beans was in the shop, then yeah, be worried about them. But when they, in this day and age, if they're worrying about a, a watch at 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, I wouldn't worry about them spending a couple of thousand, two, three, four thousand over the grey market to get a pre owned uh, Rolex certified, pre owned yeah don't worry about the money um that's the least of their worries um so yeah guys i just thought i'd break silence on this um i, I am going to be doing a couple more vids i i was umming and ahhing whether to pack the channel in and whether to let somebody else take the channel on because obviously you know there's a, there's a few subscribers i think just under five thousand subscribers who have obviously subscribed to see probably a meager content because that is primarily what i do um but yeah, I, I decided I'm going to do a couple more vids. Uh, I was going to I was going to let the channel go to somebody else, uh, someone take it over, because then they've got that starting point rather than starting from scratch. Take it over and you know do some videos of their own. But I figured you know I can make the odd video like this. Uh, there's something to talk about. There's something to report on. I wasn't going to get drawn into the dramas that goes on in the community. I wasn't going to get drawn into um, the whole debate on the market position. I know we just discussed you know the market position, but. Um, I didn't want to get drawn into it and make predictions that, end of the day, nobody knows what the market's going to do. So anybody who's making videos saying that they do, it's just clickbait. It's just bullshit just to get you through the door, just to just to earn the YouTuber money. That's, that's basically it. Um, so guys, let me know what you think. Um, put your comments down in the comment section. Um, subscribe to the channel. You know, I will make other videos. Check out my other vids. There's some pretty useful ones there. I'm not going to say they're entertaining, but they might be informative. Um, I forgot to do a wristwatch check, guys. So I'm wearing the Black Bay, where it is, the Black Bay Pro, uh, 39 mil GMT watch. Um, love, love this watch. Got this from my authorized dealer. Got the call. Um, it's not a hype watch. It's not a, you know, it's not one that you're gonna buy today and sell tomorrow and make loads of money on. It's just, you know, it, I love this watch. It's, you know, as you can see, I'm out and about, you know, in the woods quite a lot. And uh, this type of watch is just the perfect companion. So let me know what you, let me know what you guys think. Um, and I will hopefully be doing some more vids. So I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later, guys. Thanks for watching.